It's Thursday, December 29th, 2022, and this is the Talk Film Society podcast. I am your host, Marcelo Pico. Uh, as always, uh, here with my co-host for this uh, uh, show, this series, is Marcus Irving. Hey, Marcus. Hello, Marcelo. I am your always jovial <laughs> co-host, Marcus Irving. <laughs> oh, you need ready it. to talk about awards. <laughs> you need to dial it down five notches. You are <laughs> you're coming in strong, buddy. <laughs> I'm, bouncing. I'm, I'm bouncing off the walls over you're here. You're bouncing off the walls over here with my severe migraine <laughs> that I've had for three days. <laughs> well, we don't have to record. See, we <laughs> we can just have this be. No, I'm I'm happy to record. <laughs> Okay, we'll see. Any better tomorrow, Marcelo? If if you need to tap out, then just let me know, and then I go. You know what? We'll call it. (laughs) But no, Uh, if I ever say the words "tap out," (laughs) the 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 recording ends immediately. (laughs) Exactly, and then I just, I just, I just uh, stop recording. I publish the episode up until that point. So you, (laughs) you could. I mean, I I would do it, Marcus. I would do it if you right now you said, you know what? I tap out. I go, okay, fine. And I release a minute long episode. (laughs) That'll be it. I'll do it at this point. I've been doing this thing. I like having that in my back pocket. Uh, We'll see where that, how that comes out later. But this is only for this episode, by the way. I think for right now, I'm okay. Okay, but okay. I I get the rules. Yes. For this episode, again, just say it one more time because I like repeating myself. If you say ta- if you say you tap out, I end it there. I publish the episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so mm. I think this is a big episode. Okay, uh, Marcus, big one. Uh, off mic threatened that this might be a shorter episode. I th- I th- that's what you said, Marcus. Right? You 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 look around and you go, you know what? This might be a shorter episode. And I'm like, huh? We'll see. I said that. Because I think we'll see. I think this is a big one. I think people have been clamoring for this. I know I have. Uh, we're talking the best lead actress performances of 2022. Yes. Best yes, lead actresses finally. performances. 2022. Um, oh, let me do quickly do the spiel. Okay. The 10th Talk Film Society Awards, which is the little awards thing. You know, show, uh, um, you know, ceremony, whatever you want to call it. The list of movies picked by people. Uh, Talk Film Society has been doing it uh, for nine years, going on the 10th year uh, in March 2023. And we're just doing all the award- all these awards episodes, me and Marcus, because, hey, let's, get, let's, let's talk about awards. Let's talk about this season. And let's remind everybody that, hey, I should have said this at the beginning of the episode rather than uh, focus on Marcus's health. Um, the ballot is open. The ballot is open for the Talk Film Society Awards. So go to talkfilmsociety.com slash TFS Awards and vote in the first round. That should have been the headline, but whatever. I just, I just, I just realized, hey, this what, is the episode. It, what, the, the, your little, your little hobby or, or my health, Marcelo. What should have been the headline? <laughs> your, your, the hobby your or the health? Hobby or, or, or my health. <laughs> What's more important to you? I, I say, I, as a friend of yours, Marcus, I am concerned about you. But as a showman, <laughs> I was concerned about There's the no content. Reason to be concerned. It's okay. This happens. It's okay. <laughs> So 50-50, give me that at least. I'm a 50% All right. a bad person, 50%, 50% a good person. It. I have an angel and a demon on my shoulder at all times. Uh, but yes. yeah, anyway. Uh, you listen to both equally. <laughs> uh, talkfilmsociety.com slash TFS awards. Uh, vote. Okay, that's enough of, of that. I have to do that every episode. Every episode. Because sometimes uh, uh, the episode you're doing now, it's the first episode somebody's hearing. I always keep. I always have that in mind. All right, so I'm sorry to those who are listening this for listening to this for the first time. I'm sorry, Marcus. Uh, we we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I I think. <laughs> I think we we quickly talk about a few things that we've been watching that might play into our talk uh, overall with the the, the best lead actress performances of 2022. Um. Uh, me and Marcus will get into our favorites. We we ask the Discord question. That question being, what are your favorite performances? Female performances, leads. 
uh, of 2022. And we'll talk about all that in a bit. But hey, first, what have been? What have we been watching? That sounds familiar. That's not what that. That that's, we, don't think about any other. Podcast. What is it that you have been watching in this <laughs> last week or so? In the last few days, what have your eyes been attached to, Marcus? <laughs> have you seen any, anything worthwhile, Marcus? Boy, yeah, Marcella. I've done a lot of catch up and a lot of. Last scene. I've done a lot of movie watching in this last week, a lot, in a, an odd amount. That I don't think I planned it. It just kind of happened, where I watched a lot of movies, a lot of films. Now, do you like that? <laughs> I I love it, buddy. You are speaking my language, and that language is movies. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I've also been watching a lot of movies. I I, I think we, we we talked about this off mic. I think we might talk about some of the ones we've watched in the last few days. It'll, it'll roll into this conversation we're about to have. But I just want to point out one uh, 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 lead awards contender a film that I saw uh, uh, over the last week. And I threatened to talk about this last episode. I remember now, the end of the last episode, I, I said I was going to watch a few movies. Oh, yeah, you did. You did. You mentioned uh, you were going to see, you are going to go out to the theater. You said you were going to see something. Yeah. Uh, women talking. Uh, that yeah. that that one. I just quickly say the female performances in that all around amazing, uh, um, and I can see why they were brought up in previous episodes where uh, um, either they're on the gold derby thing or people in the Discord mentioned them. But yeah, the supporting actress performances in that movie are stellar. Uh, Rooney Mara is in the running for lead actress in, in that category. I wouldn't say she's like. She almost made my honorable mentions, like she barely peeked in there, but uh, not the strongest performance in that movie. I think Jack Jesse Buckley uh, um, uh, and Claire Foy are outstanding in that movie. So anyway, the best supporting actress uh, um, field, I can see them playing a part. Anyway, that's that. But the the one the one I just quickly t- I don't really even really want to really talk about it this much actually. I saw it. I, I want to say let's move on from it officially, I think. Until Marcus sees it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my book, I'm done with this. The Whale. I'm, I, I saw The Whale. The Whale. I, I can see why Brendan Fraser is the, is the front runner or, or up there, right? Uh, a lead contender in the leading acting, a leading actor race but it's a bad movie it's not good i i I don't like the movie i do you really think that you really think that i honestly think it's i've been i've been struggling with this honestly and that's a dumb word to use about a movie like the whale (laughs) to struggle with it but yeah i but uh, 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 i remember you feeling this way about uh about mother, like when that in the yeah, year the mother but, came out, you're, uh, it seems like this is a pattern for you and Aronofsky. <laughs> <laughs> and I really don't want what do you it think to of be. Noah? I don't, uh, and uh, I don't really want it to be. And listen, maybe this is going to be a bigger conversation now since you brought this up, Marcus. How dare you? <laughs> uh, uh, like, <laughs> use my own words against me. I apologize uh, to the listeners. <laughs> here we go. Uh, I, I've got my I've got my little card here. I could pull out at any time. <laughs> Yes, Marcus can tap out right now if he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I I really wanted to give it up to Aronofsky. I'm not on I'm not on the I'm not the I'm not on the Boo Aronofsky side, really. Sure, Noah, uh, and I think it's just a problem with like the the last few Aronofsky movies for me, like Noah, Mother. There are things in in those movies in particular that like like speak to me and what Aronofsky is saying in them thematically uh, uh, is like okay that's that's good that's clever Aronofsky's trying to build like a filmography that's saying something I also see that in the whale but it's I don't know the Aronofsky of it all is there but it's just a bad movie <laughs> i could give i could give mother I, I i you know i should rewatch mother i might see that and i like, think it's a classic now because i think visually in mother it's much more interesting 
I think the performances there are all stronger. It's like thematically more like grandiose. Meanwhile, the whale is so small. It's so trite. It's it's I don't know. I, 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 anyway, I'm gonna stop myself because I could keep going on. But I did I did really want to feel something. I, I, I do you think it's it's that un, both of these movies want you to be uncomfortable, Mother and the uh, the whale. I think. Yeah. Uh, do you feel it's some part of that that you just feel? Well, I think maybe you it's feel like Aronofsky has uh, forced you to see the truth. In our society. <laughs> but okay, but but here's the thing. I think in Mother, I guess maybe there's that layer of it, it plays on fantasy, you know. And you have to admit, Marcus, it's not based in any reality, even on like the dialogue. No. Scene. Like no, right? It's <laughs> of it's it's, not. it's it's not right, right? But with like the way, but then no. that's the thing about the whale. And maybe I need to rewatch um, Requiem for a Dream. But in The Whale, when Aronofsky is like playing with like these people who you perceive as real people, in The Whale, it doesn't feel that genuine, authentic. Like those... Oh, God. Here we go. Marcus, you, again, we can tap... This could be just The Whale special. <laughs> And we just do the lead actress episode next episode. If you the want to just tap out. Lead actress episode, we're talking about the movie. <laughs> the movie, the way. Like male-led, male-directed. Although, okay, okay. But... I'll, I don't know uh, anything about any of the other casts. Uh, I, uh, oh, the, okay, there are some great other performances in the movie, but... It is. It is. It is about Frasier, and I, I see him getting nominated for sure. They're Frasier. Um, but yeah, he's he's really the one real thing about the movie that I'm like, okay, that works. But oh, and I was looking at up Hong Chu. Uh, she's also amazing. She's in the supporting actor, uh, sorry, supporting actress category, and I think she could possibly be nominated because I think um, she was also in uh, the menu, right? I think we talked about that uh, during the best supporting actress uh, episode. Um, but anyway. Here's the thing, Marcus, and, and and it really comes down to this. It it's 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 trying to portray, like I was saying before, like these real, real seeming people, but he doesn't pull it off because it just feels so hokey and laughable. Like that's the thing. Like, here's what happened. And yes. again, sit sit back, Marcus. I'm sorry. This, I'm sorry. This is happening. <laughs> Sit back, relax. I have a story to tell. Okay. okay. And again, uh, I'm ready to hear it, Marcel. And again, get you raw, can get vulnerable. You can tap out at any time. <laughs> nope. uh, I, I say that this. to you. I say that to you and the listener. Um, so I saw the whale at um, I'll just say it, the Animal Draft House uh, here in town in Austin. Okay. okay. Um, Tim League. <laughs> Tim League was not there running, running the projector, okay. but uh, but I hear on some nights he is there running the projector. Um, if and if you look back, you might see his like you know shaved little head back there. Um, <laughs> I saw this on the Thursday night it came out. Um, I I forget I I may have seen uh, something else that night, and I go you know what I might as well cross this off the list. That's how I felt about the whale, and I and listeners of, of this series. Um, I think I mentioned it before. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to the whale. I wasn't looking forward to the whale, and I I said, you know what? It's Thursday. It's a 10 p.m. show. I'll just do it. Let's, let's get this over with. So, or it might have been Wednesday. It doesn't doesn't matter the day. It was one of the late night shows uh, of the of the opening night. Doesn't matter the day. Doesn't matter the day. Just just think of it. Just think think of this, folks. Opening night, 10 p.m. Uh, uh, the Animal Draft House. I sit down. Movie starts. I go, something's off. Okay, we're about five minutes in. The aspect ratio is wrong. Um, it was filmed, I think, in like Academy ratio, oh, in like 4-3. Yeah. Um, but what was on screen were like black bars covering up the top and bottom of the frame. So it was a like cropped. So it was like a little square in the middle of the screen. Looked bad. Everybody in my theater, well, I guess, you know. Started screaming. <laughs> I mean, I almost did. I <laughs> when when I saw the title screen, it said a film by Darren Aronofsky, and like his name was cut off at the bottom. I go, oh no! 
uh, everybody just started shouting. Ugh. I uh, <laughs> we all ran out of the theater. I pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> I was Go detained. Right the door, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so it took about ten minutes for for finally the movie to stop, and uh, somebody comes in and says, "Sorry, folks." Uh, we're going to restart the movie. Some give bonehead us... back here screwed up the projection. <laughs> Damn you, Tim League. So they were like, "We need to restart the we need to restart the digital projector because the file is 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 wrong or something." So we had to wait for the projector to restart. Now I'm going to spoil the first seconds of the whale. So I'm sorry, Marcus. I'm going to do this. Darren and- Aronofsky's name. Uh, <laughs> yes, we see Darren, Al- Darren Aronofsky's name on screen. Okay, you know that that's over black screen, and then we fade All in right. into this. And listeners, this is the first thirty seconds, and I think this really boils down what this movie is for me. In these first thirty seconds, this is why I don't like the whale. Okay, so we're you we're have just heard me grabbing pills from my head. <laughs> Marcus's, Marcus's hand is hovering over the tap out button right now. Uh, somebody came in a few minutes into the projector being rebooted. We're waiting for it to, to happen. Uh, he comes in, he goes, <clears throat> like, folks, where would you like the movie to start? Would you like the movie to start all over again? Or would you like to start it 10 minutes in? Like, we're cut off. A lot of us were quiet. I didn't say anything. I mean, I, I could have gone either way. Honestly, I was more leaning towards, let's just start where we where we left off because i'm kind of like not feeling this movie let it roll yeah so he said uh there's some there there there's some like let uh, it roll baby (laughs) nobody saying anything (laughs) and so some some dude like uh 30 seconds into this like okay we don't know what we're gonna do some dude in the middle of the conversation just shouts out Start it when Brendan Fraser's jacking off, man. <laughs> the audience <laughs>, laughs. <laughs> because yes, I like that. The first thirty seconds of the whale is a creeping, like dolly shot uh, reveal of Brendan Fraser as the lead character in the movie jacking off violently. Um, now. <laughs> After that scene, <laughs> it becomes what you think it is, and it's not really. Pl- <laughs> oh God! It, it is a it is a vile movie. It is not funny at all. It is it is it is <laughs> supposed to be a portrayal of a man that is just suffering in so many ways. Again, I say it's not supposed to be funny, but <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm sorry, it is. And somebody making a comment about Brendan Fraser in the whale jacking off violently, and him saying, "Let just put it, just just start it over, so we can see him jack off again." And the crowd laughing. <laughs> I I didn't laugh out loud, but I'm like, okay, fair enough, <laughs> I guess, because people are not taking this movie seriously. It should not be taken seriously because, like, I don't think Aronofsky really had any has had. I, maybe he doesn't have that in him anymore as a filmmaker to make something feel so real and authentic. I think he works in the theatrics. He doesn't have I think. sincerity in him. Sincerity, right. I think the I think like Black Swan works because it's just this it's just heightened. It's just unreal. It's just yeah. it's a horror movie. I think the wrestler works because it is placed in this fantasy of like a, a professional wrestling and there's just like a level of reality there, but like it's 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 not supposed to be played like dead serious it's like uh, 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 but in the whale it is supposed to be serious i understand like brendan fraser has his warmth about him he does make you know jokes and everything but it's not just that it's not just the opening moment of him jacking off violently there are other moments where it's supposed to be real sincere real serious but it's just it's it's He's jacking off softly <laughs> and jacking off like like right in the middle like neither soft nor quiet just like regular <laughs> amount of decibels Right. I mean, it's there are other moments. I don't want to get into those moments where it feels like, oh, this is supposed to be a real sincere moment, and it's just played for not played for laughs, but just seen as like this is ridiculous. You can't help but laugh. That's it. Yeah. So no, I think I think uh, I get it. Yeah. I, I, I'd say I felt a little bit the same about Bones and all seeing that with people, where 
things are supposed to be coming off maybe more ah, serious or horrific than they are. And I'm just kind of like, okay, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what reaction I'm supposed to have really. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I guess it's about tone. I forget what other movie I, I've had this problem with before about tone. And sometimes tone is uh, something is supposed to be. And again, maybe, maybe this is Aronofsky super genius. Maybe he's like, oh, this is supposed to be ridiculous and funny. You're supposed to laugh at it. And like, what? Really, dude? Like this in particular? Which is, I, I guess, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know, Marcus. I I just think um, something's off about it. It, it, it I, I, I want it to be a certain type of thing. I think Brendan Fraser thinks he's in a certain type of movie. But I think just the direction, the way it's the story, the way it's framed, the ending... All of it really just bothers me, and I, and then and I, I I have really thought about some of the aspects of the movie. Uh, I thought, oh, I I think that's clever. I think that's smart. But I don't know everything else about it does not uh, does not fit me well. Well, I watched the movie where Santa like stabbed people with a candy cane. <laughs> it was pretty cool. A uh, violent night. Um, that was all right. What did you think of that one? I like that movie. Well, at night, I have a story about that. Right. All right, uh, sit the, back and relax. Here no, we go. no, 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 no. You don't. You do not have a fucking story. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep saying the things I have. Okay, I've got eight movies I watched in this last week. Right. Most I, of them yeah. were. Most of th- three or four of them, four of them are going to come up in this episode. Uh, and I, I don't. I wasn't necessarily watching these for catch up. I'd say two of these I watched for catch-up. Two of them I just kind of happened to watch uh, uh, in in this week that where they mattered the most because of actresses in them. Where they mattered the most to me in this recording in your podcast, Marcel. I appreciate it, And Marcus. I also watched... Uh, yeah. That's it. You want me to watch... Do you want me to tell you about the old movies I watched? Yeah, sure. Why not? Or just get into the new I one. talked for 10 yeah, minutes sure. straight, okay. so I, I think watched, you uh, deserve some... Uh, screen time, Marcus. <laughs> it's a little room. I watched uh, Cry Baby, John Waters, uh, Johnny Depp. Really good. I've never really, seen really it. Really fantastic musical. Really. I, it's it's great. It's a really great musical. I'm not very uh, well read on Waters. I have only seen Hairspray when I was a kid and now this. But... Uh, it's a really cool fucking movie, man. Cool yeah. is the word I would use. I watched Tammy and the T-Rex. I know that's a movie you have some affinity for. <clears throat> I do enjoy Tammy and the T-Rex. Um, I have a story about that, which I'm not going to tell. Um, but yeah, I... I uh... <laughs> <laughs> we should play a game. Like, name a movie and see if there's a story for me that I can tell about it. You know, just, just well, quick, quick, quick experiment. Mo- yeah, yeah, next yeah. Movie. <laughs> yeah, next movie. What, my, what fi- is it? my final old movie. Uh, but I'm a cheerleader. Um, no, I don't have a story. I mean, Natasha I, Leone, 1999. Yeah, probably. I, I, I've seen it. Uh, I do like it a lot. Um, I, yeah, that, I, I, oh, that was the first time I, watch I'm for me like last year. Yeah, it's re- yeah, it's 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 really? great. Yeah, I I'm glad I finally watched. I, I want to pick up that Blu-ray and see the director's cut. Oh yeah, I I saw the movie before. I think. Oh god, I don't know actually. Because like the the director's cut came out what like in the last year, and I think I mm. may have seen it for the first time like a year ago before the director's cut. I think so. I I, I need to watch the director's cut if I haven't seen it, which I don't know if I have or not. Yeah, well, all three of these movies appropriate for this week. Uh, we've got strong, ferocious lead performances. Uh, <laughs> but I'm a cheerleader. Is Natasha Leone, uh, Crybaby. Her name is Amy Locaine. Amy Locaine. I have no idea. Yeah, but she was phenomenal in the movie. Uh, great singer. <clears throat> and Denise Richards, of course, for Tammy and the T-Rex. Of uh, course. Just three great female lead performances. Awards worthy in their own right. Yeah, and I I had a great week of movie watching thanks to those movies. They put me in a great mood. Uh, but I I had I did some uh, more movie watching. I watched Meet the Fablemans. I watched uh, 
The Blonde, and I watched Glass Onion, Knives Out, Mystery, <laughs> and I watched uh, The Resurrection of Rebecca Hall. Tim Roth. Oh, and, yeah. Well, and uh, yeah, I've got various feelings that I think are, those are going to come up on this episode, all four of those. So we oh, can wow. uh, skip ahead here, Marcelo. Wow, let's let's skip ahead to the next segment. Thank you, Marcus. Let's skip, yeah, let's skip to the, yeah. The the movies are done. Marcelo watched the whale. He loved it. Um, <laughs> if you could, if you no, could. Do, do you think you would say? Do you think we already did best actor? Would you go back and say Brendan Fra- or fight for Brendan Fraser? Would you put him on your top five? You think? Uh, I I w- I was thinking about this. Him. Hold on, the other day. Let me go back and see who my best actors were. Um. No, he wouldn't Austin be on Butler. there. No. So, j- just to recap Colin what I Farrell. said uh, during the best actor conversation, my picks from one to five: Butler, Farrell, Mortensen, Cruz, Craig. Craig in the aforementioned Glass Onion. I think Craig makes the five spot. He's the lead actor in that movie. You think Craig really? I love Craig in Glass Onion. I think his Benoit Blanc in Glass Onion is better than his Benoit Blanc in Knives Out. Um, because I, I think agree. he's I think he's more comfortable in the role of Benoit Blanc. He really like goes for not I don't know it, he does a lot there for just being like a basically the zany detective. Um, I don't know I, I I liked him a lot in Glass Onion in that lead performance. But no, Brendan Fraser, sorry buddy, I think you'd make possibly the honorable mentions. Um, again, it's a it's a solid performance. I would not begrudge anybody, you know, voting for him in whatever awards thing, Oscars or Talk Film Society Awards, either one. Sure, he'll get nominated. That's fine. I just don't care for the movie and like his performance is solid, but yet does really, he tries the best with bad material and it's about the material part of it that makes the performance so great. Anyway, that's it. That's all I'll say. Okay, so it's time to talk about uh, our favorite leading ladies of this year. But before that, we're going to play the Gold Derby game. The Gold Derby game! Yes, our favorite. Our very favorite. Yeah, Marcus loves this. Because he has to struggle to think of five names. I have fun with it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, Gold Derby, uh, it's the prediction website I used to cheat during Oscar pools. Uh, uh, It uh, combines uh, experts' opinions... Uh, people on chat boards' opinions, all these people's opinions about who's going to get nominated in what category in the Oscars. Right now, I wrote down, let's go as usual, six. I wrote down the top six uh, they think are in the running from most popular to number sixth on the board. So, Marcus, you have five picks as usual. Can you guess the top six? Best lead actress. Marcelo? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going for... I'm going to run the table here. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Kate Blanchett in Tar. Yes. Michelle Yeoh in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yes. Michelle Williams in The Fablemans. Yes. All right. Now <laughs> my confidence has fallen away. After three. <laughs> I'm going to guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna. G- <laughs> <laughs> you were so. You, I I really thought you were gonna get this. I mean, I was like, well, okay, wow. Tong Wei from Decision to Leave. No, <laughs> no. Damn it! Fuck everything. Fuck all of you. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know how much. How in my bubble am I with uh, my goth and pearl? Is that just a film Twitter thing, or are they really pushing it? You know what? Let's go to and and I think. Uh, uh, there. Oh, Viola Davis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you got that one. Okay, so four, four to five. I don't think yeah. you. I don't think you will get uh, uh, the last two, but uh, I, I'll give you a hint about one of them. Uh, it's it is from a big December release. Um, I've mentioned her before. Uh, as you do that, I'll look up where Mia Goff is uh, on the leaderboard here on goldderby.com. She is. Well, is it whoever from the whale? No. Do you give up? Or no, that was supporting, you said. Yeah, that was supporting. Yeah, I give up. <laughs> Margot Robbie and Babylon. Margot Robbie. Yes, I actually should have got that one. Maybe we're not in a bubble because uh, looking through Gold Derby, Mia Goth is actually 13 
uh, uh, on the list. Okay, it's not bad, really. Because okay, Mm-mm. let's let's go not through let's let's go through Gold Derby's uh, picks from thirteen up, really quick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I I, I, I I like this category. I don't know if you know this, Marcus. From the last four we've done, including this one, this is my favorite from this year. Okay. So I, I'm with you. Number thirteen, Mia Goth. Number twelve, Ricky Cripps in Corsage. I do not know what that movie is. I'm sorry, Ricky. I love you though. Um, number eleven, Emma Thompson in Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. I've heard that's good. Uh, number ten. Here we go. Here's where things get tight. Number 10, Jennifer Lawrence in Causeway. Getting saucy. Number nine. <laughs> okay, okay. Number nine, Ana de Armas in Blonde. Number eight, Naomi Aki in I Want to Dance with Somebody. Number seven, Olivia Coleman in Empire of Light. Number six, Margot Robbie, Babylon. Number five, Viola Davis, Woman King. Number four, this is one you didn't get, and I would have not, I would not have gotten it either. Uh, da- Danielle Deadweiler in Till. A movie that I, I'm afraid to watch because it's it does it does look like a rough watch. Uh, then the top three, of course, Michelle Williams, Mich- uh, Michelle Yao, and Kate Blanchett. So those are the top ten, or sorry, the top thirteen. Wow, what a race! And then after that, like yeah, it, that, that's why I'm like, I mean, even like Florence Pugh is in the running down there. Latita Wright, Rooney Mara, it, it's a packed uh, category this year, and. Um, Pack cat. Yeah, and now now we got to reveal our own personal tops here in the lead actress uh, of 2022 episode we're doing. Right, Marcus? That's the next thing we do? Yeah, Marcella. We're going to uh, uh, each go through our top five uh, female performances of the year. We're not trying to guess or anything. These are our personal performances that we liked the most this year because, uh, because, uh, they're the ones that meant the most to us. And we're saying those because they could be nominated for the talk film. Society Awards, <laughs> yes. Right. You know what? That's what we're doing we, here. We're not just doing the Oscars. We, we should have said this at the beginning and this is my fault. I mean, at the beginning of the series, like four episodes ago, the, the, we could have said this, these are our ballots. It's like, uh, I need to look back, but I yeah. think, like, if I were voting, essentially, if I were voting the Talk Film Society Awards, which I normally don't do, because I, I'm the vote counter, and I don't, I can't have a vote myself, that would be cheating. But if I were to vote mm-hmm. in, the, in the ballot, these picks would, would be who I'd be putting down. So, um, but that's just, that's just how I see it. I, I mean, uh, would you say the same, Marcus, like the ones you've written well, I'm, down? I'm straight up going to vote. Yeah, I'm straight up going to vote, and yeah. these are what I'm going to vote with. Yeah, so, for, th- yeah, these are our personal ballots, but our personal picks. Unless, thing, unless things change in the weeks to come, of course, we're still going to see course. things. We're, yeah, we're still yeah. seeing things. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I yeah. still need to see, I mean, I, 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 I told myself, maybe by this week I'll be done with 2022 movies, me personally, because I've seen so many, like too many, that they may encroach my social life and hurt me forever. Possibly. But... <laughs> I could still see like <laughs> After Sun. I need to see that. Um, what else? Like yeah. even like the little ones. Not little. Sorry, that's that's the wrong word. Even the ones that came Those out. Little teeny tiny, <laughs> cute little movies. Right? <laughs> the ones that came out so long ago that I need to catch up on. And I say little. I don't know why I said little. I should cut that out because I don't want to diminish <laughs> Turning Red, the Pixar movie, which I hear it's great. But like it's just not on my it's radar. Good. It wasn't on my radar back then. Yeah, it looked nothing against it. Uh, I had a really good time watching it. It's it's got that Pixar magic, you know. Like you'll you'll watch it and you'll enjoy it. But I I'll just quickly say it. it, it or you I haven't I haven't loved a, I haven't I haven't fully loved a Pixar movie since um, Inside Out, and that was like what like Marcelo, same boat. Yeah, so and, eight years uh, ago. This has Inside Out vibes. Okay, okay. Strong Inside Out vibes from Turning Red. You know what? Well, then, well, then I'll, I'll definitely. It's literally the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's I'll watch her, it. Her feelings turn her into a little red panda. <laughs> and well, then she has to deal with her feelings. I, I should have. I should have seen this months ago. So okay, fine. I'll watch Turning yeah. Red. But anyway, yeah, I, I still need to see that and other movies. So yeah, all this could change. But for right now, this is what we're doing. So who started last time? Was it you or me? Yeah, it was Best Supporting Actor last time. 
Um, Wait, it was you in episode one? Yeah, because me, I probably you, started the, the first one. I think it's me. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so it's Marcelo's time to shine. All right, so I guess it's my time to shine. Um, all right, so I'll, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go from honorable mentions to uh, five to one. So honorable mentions, uh, Michelle Williams in Fablemans. Uh, category fraud, whatever. But right now, I'm saying Michelle Williams. She's the lead in Fable Winds, or she's all lead. Uh, but she, it's it's a very odd, weird performance. Yes, it is, but it's indelibly like hers. And sure, it's like supposed to be a facsimile or a, a proxy or whatever, an analogy of Steven Spielberg's mom. But I don't know. It's it, it, Michelle Williams does her own she, she puts her own little spice on it it's like her own little thing so it's it's a be her type of character and i think it's one of her best performances michelle williams favorite woman's greta gerwig white noise the new noah Baumbach movie that oh i saw that in theaters um i think since the last time we talked marcus i forgot about that i love that movie i love white noise maybe this is why i didn't mention it before because I, I knew i was gonna talk about it now um white noise that on me White Noise, great. Uh, it's it's uh, popping on Netflix uh, the 30th of, uh, of, uh, of this month, December. So in a few days. Uh, I I loved Greta Gerwig in this. I love her regardless of whatever she does. I think she's a great person. But as an actress, like oh, she's like solid in White Noise, along with Adam Driver. Overall, very good movie. Um, so moving on. Lea Sado, Crimes of the Future. Another honorable mention. Love her in that. Uh, one of the best female performances in a Cronenberg film. And that's saying a lot, because he does create some amazing mm-hmm. female characters in his movies. But she's definitely up there. Top tier. Um, those are my honorable mentions. Yeah, Michelle Williams, Sadu, Gerwig. Now, quickly, top five. I don't want to take up too much time with this. Because we're going to talk about these names over and over. Some of them, anyway. Uh, yeah. Number five. Oh, actually, nobody's, nobody's going to mention this. I haven't even looked at the Discord, Marcus. Uh, I haven't read through all the all the all the uh, picks, but I don't think anybody's mentioned this. I think I might be the only one. Lore, Lauren Lavera in Terrifier Two. <laughs> now, I l- okay, yeah, so you're definitely <laughs> the only one. Okay, in the world, in the world to put whoever Lauren Lavera, the lead actress in Terrifier Two. No, putting- no, no disrespect to her or <laughs> or even the movie. It's just- Marcelo, you're weird about this. <laughs> I am weird about this movie. I, I, you haven't seen it yet, have you? Uh, no, but I do did get the conf- confirmation today of my uh, 4K steelbook coming from, or 4K whatever, coming from Best Buy. Well, okay. I don't think it's a steelbook. You haven't seen it, but I won't I won't say too much. I'll just say her lead act, her, her performance in it, her character in it. A big reason why I love Terrifier 2 is her and her character. And I think y- you know me, Marcus. You know me well enough. Like, I think as, you, as soon as you see Terrifier 2, whenever you watch it, you go, oh, I'll, I know why Marcel likes this. Okay. She, she has red hair. <laughs> <laughs> She's a great female character in a, in a great horror movie. <laughs> Uh, anyway, amazing. Speaking of great female characters in great horror movies, number four, Mia Goth and Pearl. Uh, Ooh. I dig Pearl a lot. I dig it a little bit more than X. I think they're both very, very, very good. Um, even though I think uh, here's the thing, I think X is is very good, but it's just a, it's a it's not just a it is a solid slasher movie from top to bottom. Solid slasher movie. Pearl is like something else. It's like psychological thriller. It's in this dreamlike state, and in the center of it, it's just like Mia Goth's film. But just one of the, one of my favorite moments of, of the year is just Mia Goth's performance in Pearl and one you know uh, uncut sequence, one one long take in particular. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about if you've seen the movie. But yeah, just for that alone, honestly, that's why she's on here for me. Um, and then, and then the top three, we're gonna say these names a lot, okay? So number three, this might be this, okay. th- this might be a shocker. Number three is Kate Blanchett and Tar. Okay, why number should number three? Yeah, I know why. Wow. Okay, I guess we. I guess let's just let's just rip the bandaid off. Number two, Margot Robbie and Babylon. Yes, I think she's that great in Babylon. I put Oof. her at number two. Oof. 
And then number one, Michelle Yao. Oof. Michelle Yao and everything everywhere all at once. I cannot deny it. Oof. I cannot deny Michelle Yao being number one for me. So just to reiterate, number one, Yao. For number you. two, Robbie. Number three, Blanchett. Four, Goth. Five, Lauren Lavera from Terrifier 2. That's it. That's it for me, Marcus. I mean, do you, I mean... I heard I heard you reacting throughout that whole thing. How, how do you feel? What's 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 the aftermath like, Marcelo? I like your list. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> and I like it because it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'd like to ask you something, Marcus. Yeah, what's that? What are your favorite lead actress performances of the year twenty twenty two? Can we do that? Can we do that later, Marcelo? <laughs> Are you going to tap out right now? I might. (laughs) I think this tap out bit has to end. (laughs) We really are going to put it out. Wait a second. So sorry. What's going to happen here is this is a cliffhanger. Uh, I'm going to take some. Hold on. Just let me. No, no, no. Take some medicine. This is uh, this is amazing podcasting for me. This is a cliffhanger. Oh, my God. We we are stopping this episode. This is going to be a two parter. We're we're uh, we're coming back next week to reveal Marcus's list. I'm sorry. Everybody. We'll go through the Discord picks and we'll talk more about these performances of this year, uh, lead actress wise. Okay. Okay. What a cliffhanger! That this seems is like, fair enough. Cause I I see. I have things to say, Marce. Here's the reason I'm tapping out. I have things to say, Marcelo. You talked about Michelle Williams. You talked about. Uh, Michelle, yeah, you talked about you. You brought them up, all these lovely ladies. Right? <laughs> okay, you said it. And <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Who were your two and three? Uh, Margot Robbie and Kate Blanchett. Yeah, so I definitely want to hear more about these these uh, just lovely gals, <laughs> but I don't have it in me right now to talk about them. <laughs> Formulating thoughts is hard for me right now. But this is great. We, this is but great. I want to talk about them, and I think they need to be talked about more. <laughs> this is this. I love this. This is a cliffhanger, and I'm not going to advertise this as a cliffhanger. Uh, or might or might it would it, be funny to release an episode called <laughs> "Best Lead Actress Performances Part One." <laughs> uh, but but by the time we get by, by the time we get back, this episode will be out, and Marcus can listen back to it and like. You know, and, and it'll be like it, 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 it'll be like we never waited a week to record totally again. Embarrassed. <laughs> we talked about the whale for. I know. I, <laughs> this is half the whale, half first half of lead actress conversation. <laughs> Marcus, talk from society dot com slash Southland Tales for oh, our podcast. Where, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. where can they follow you on Twitter, or not on Twitter? Anywhere else? Uh at at junk blader uh junk junk blader b b l a d e r uh you can look me up everywhere i've got that yeah <clears throat> and let's hope for a speedy uh, recovery have a nice from marcus apocalypse.com <laughs> uh marcus thank you and also uh, hey uh go to the patreon patreon.com slash talk from society vote <laughs> tfs awards talk from society.com slash tfs awards that's it Marcus, until next time. Uh, I see you at the movies. See you at the movies, right? No, no, yeah. I never say that. But you don't say that. No. You never say that. Don't Bye. <laughs>